Hvordan har du det? Oh, jeg har det fint. Jeg var ikke expecting any Norwegian lines her. Okay. I'm impressed already. So, how is it being involved with Titanic? That must be an exciting thing. Oh yes, that's very exciting. Um, to be, uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you you really feel like. Uh, I guess I have the same feeling as when when a, when a, a little girl from the outside, outside the city comes into the big city and she sees all these, um, all the, the big city and how all these opportunities that's in the big city. I really feel like it's it's uh, Titanic has opened so many doors, and I had a so great time recording it, and to be part of it, such a huge success is it's. Uh, it's uh, you know, you can't describe it. Mm -hmm. Especially now that it's number one, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I, 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 you know, when you, when, when we did the recording, you, you don't, you don't think about that. I mean, I, I never dreamt about it. I, I didn't, I didn't think about it a second. I, I thought it was very good, and I loved the music, but mm -hmm. I never dreamed that it was, that it was gonna really take off. <laughs> you know. Right. Were you at all upset that you were more highly profiled on the cover of the CD or anything like that? No, no, because I was, um, I'm, I'm hired as a musician, and it was, it, James Horner, he wanted me to sing together with the flute and the bagpipes, so, right. so I'm, I'm, on the, on the album, I'm, I'm part of the score. Right. Does it bother you at all that some people think that you're Enya? <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't bother me, because I think it's more, I understand why they, why they think like that because the whole but for me it's it's not the voice but it's the whole the whole atmosphere that the music uh, that the music brings out I mean it's, it's the atmosphere and it's what is around the voice that is very Enya like but also it has this very uh, the melody line is very Irish right it has this very Irish touch so I mean it's, that's not strange now I'm sure you're even if you did feel differently, you'd probably be very diplomatic, but did it upset you at all that Celine Dion got to sing the title song? <laughs> uh, well, um, no, it didn't, because I was, um, as I told you earlier, I mean, uh, James, James, when when I was involved in, in this project, I didn't, you know, I was I was involved as to sing in the score. Right. I know perfectly well that the untitled song is very different. Uh but I also know that that James he wrote the song for me uh, because that was it was part you know it's a, it, it is a theme from the from the movie uh -huh. and um, but 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 I mean Celine Dion she I think she does a great job on the song I think she has a beautiful voice right and she is the best selling female artist so <laughs> <laughs> right quite obvious I think so so he did write it for you even though Celine Dion recorded it is that what you said. Well, yeah, he, 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 um, well, he said so. <laughs> okay. You've done a lot of Irish projects with the Chieftains, and then you were on St. Patrick's Day with David on the David Letterman show and the Gaelic song. Do you feel like you're turning a little bit Irish? <laughs> well, Irish is not so far from Scandinavian music. Right. So for me to sing with, when, when I first sang with the Chieftains, it wasn't, it wasn't that, um, you know, it, it felt quite natural. Mm -hmm. Things the Irish songs, it was, you know, it's it's, uh, it's part of our culture family. Right. And, you know, the Vikings, they were everywhere. Uh huh. Well, you were quite a fan of the Chieftains for a while. I think I read back in '93 or so. I read an article about you saying you liked the Chieftains. So. Yeah, yeah. I think they are they are wonderful, great musicians, wonderful people, and and um, so so I really like that. Right. I do I really like I like them very very much. I had originally read that you were going to be performing the song on the Tears of Stone album that actually is on the Long Journey Home album. So what are you going to be contributing to the Tears of Stone album? Well, as a matter of fact, Paddy is... I'm going to have a meeting with Paddy. I know, I don't know, no, in March, I think. Uh-huh. And, um, I, well, I don't, I don't know what's happening. Uh, he has four other songs that he wants to play for me, and and, and maybe we record another a new song then for Tears of Stone. Tears of Stone album, but uh, I don't know which one. Right. This song we recorded, um, the Unrev to Edgar Garrick, Where You're At The Rock, we recorded that song two years ago. So uh, it would be nice 
going to do another song as well. <laughs> yeah. How do you remain normal and grounded when you're such a huge phenomenon in Norway? Well, um, I mean, like Kate Kata Augusta, the actress, she, you know, she did her media thesis on the Sissel phenomenon in Norway, you know, and so it seems to me like it would be really easy to get kind of a big head, at least at home. Well, well for me, it's, 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 um, I have two lives. I have one life as a, I have one life that is my job and my mm -hmm. career, and I have one life that is my private life. Right. And in my private life, and, you know, that, that's very sacred for me because that's the place where I relax and I can, I, you know, it's, it's because then I'm, uh, then I'm just like all the others. So, but for me, it's been always been very important to have contact with my family and with my friends. And, and when I was starting this career, when I was 16 and I started professional, I was still at school. Uh -huh. And it was important for me to stay in school because that was, the only place where I could, where I could be just like the other ones at the school. I mean, to them, to my to my schoolmates, I was just like one of them, and right. that was a very nice feeling. So I could relax there. That's good. But even though people in Scandinavia, they have, um, I think people in Scandinavia they're very nice and very, they they look at me as one of their own, and that is a very nice feeling. Right. Um, in the beginning, they put. I felt like they were putting me up on a pedestal. I don't do that anymore, <laughs> and that's good. <laughs> yeah, was that difficult? You know, in your childhood, becoming a professional at such a young age. Well, um, some part of it might be a little bit difficult because I everybody knew who I was, uh -huh. and so I couldn't go out. I well, I was not that. I was not the type that was going out in a disco and wow, 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 this is fun, you know. Uh -huh. I was not, didn't attract me at all. I was more into the, but I, I like to go out with my friends to a pizza bar or whatever, you know. Right. A movie, see a movie. And then sometimes it could be a little bit annoying, particularly for my friends. Yeah. Because they wanted, you know, I was, I was their friend and suddenly, you know, we could talk and then suddenly people could come up and, and, they were sort of reminding them that I was not only Sissel, but I was Sissel the singer. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, but, uh, but that, I mean, people get used to it as well, but people people have been very nice, and, and so I didn't, it was more that I was so much into the singing and what I was doing, so it was not that a problem for me. Right. You mentioned in several articles that I've read wanting to keep your Norwegian style on this new album that you're producing. Is that difficult? Do you feel pressure to change to fit in the American market? No, I don't. Because um, what I'm doing now is a worldwide album. Uh huh. And not actually an American album. It's right. for the American market. And I think that uh, as long as you are honest to yourself and that you do what you want to do and you know, you shouldn't, as an artist, or if you shouldn't, you, you know, you, you should know about who you are and what you stand for. And if you, because if you know who you are, what you stand for, what you want to do, it's easier to listen to what other has, you know, what other wants to tell you and other styles. But, so that's why I want, I'm, I'm, I want to keep my, keep my identity, but I don't mind mixing it with right. others. Right. But it's very important that my, because my identity is shining through that. How are you going to maintain your identity or your style on this album? Will it be similar to like Inner Stichelen, but in English, or you know, what, how is it going to be? Well, I would guess it is. It it is will be a development from from Inner Stichelen, from that album. Uh huh. It is just a development from that, and because I like that album very much, and and, and but it's important to. I have changed. A bit. I don't know how, but I, you know, you change. It's five years ago since I recorded that album, right? And then a lot of things have happened. So, you know, and it's important to explore and you know to to cross some borders that you have that I had on that album. So that's why I'm I'm now working with Rick Sh Rick Shodoff, and because he has uh, he has done so many things and he has been through so many musical styles. And I think that is very fascinating, and he's a very good producer. Right. Talking about different musical styles, 
Have you ever considered singing jazz or opera since you sort of already have? Uh, well, yeah. I, I, well, opera, I think it's very, very hard because if you want to sing opera, you have, really have to train. Uh huh. And I'm not so good at that. So, <laughs> so uh, what do you know? It's, uh, it's not. It's fun to do things that is a little bit different from what you usually do. I think that is inspiring. But I don't think I will be. Um, I, I love listening to opera and jazz. Uh-huh. But I, I don't think I ever be a jazz musician or an opera singer. Right. But I love listening to it, and of course I, I sing it, you know, a little bit at home. Uh-huh. Just for fun. So maybe uh-huh. one day, I don't know. So what kind of music do you listen to for fun at home then? Well, it is opera and jazz. Uh-huh, pretty much? Wow. A little bit of... And I have the radio on all the time, so I got to hear what's the, the latest news and <laughs> all the pop and R&B and everything rock. Whatever. So you actually listen to rock music too, huh? Yeah, some of it I do, yes. You've performed with Placido Domingo and Jose Carreras, I know. Have you ever performed with the third tenor, Pavarotti? No, I've never <laughs> performed with Pavarotti. <laughs> I just wondered if you'd like, done the whole three tenors, you know, performed with them all. Well, I know I had an invitation once during one of his concerts that Pavarotti has in his home inside his home, but I, I already had another concert to do, so I, I couldn't. Right. So maybe one day. I read somewhere that you had been invited to tour with Placido Domingo, and that maybe you were or weren't. What's happening with that? Well, I don't know. I, w- I, I was invited uh, with Placido, or was it Jose, or both. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember that now. I get so confused, but... but uh, uh, but that I couldn't because I was on another tour. So uh-huh. I mean, I, I, they're they're great they're great singers and great performers. So I but right now we don't have any plans. Right. In, back in 1994, you said in an interview with USA Today that you could sing several different genres. You were a crossover artist, but you said that you didn't do rap. But now you've done a rap song of sorts, and I just wanted to wanted you to comment a little bit about that. Well, um, well, I'm not rapping, so right. I still do what I do. I, I'm singing, and, and I sing this opera, opera part. And for me to do um, to do the the Prince Eagle was, you know, that was a challenge. And and I thought it was a very the, the mixture the mixture between opera and rap was so very interesting, and it was very well done. I think it was very it was done with a very uh, in a very delicate way to mix the two styles. And I think they, uh, I mean, it's it's two different worlds. It's the new world meets uh, the past. And I think, that, I think that is very interesting, and I was fascinated by it. So that's why I said yes. You said that you uh, aren't so good at training. Do you practice often, or do you, have you taken musical lessons, voice lessons for a long time? Well, I I have a I have a singing teacher back home. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That I see, you know, sometimes I see her uh, every third month, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, you know, it depends when I'm home and depends uh, what I feel like. But um, I should be singing every day, but I don't. I have to admit that. <laughs> uh, train, but sometimes I'm I'm very clever and do that every day. So. Um, that's why I sometimes I just forget to sing. That's why. I read that you had been invited to perform at Lilith Fair, the music festival sponsored by Sarah McLachlan, and I was wondering if that is going to happen or not. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think that is, um, that is a schedule problem. Uh huh. So I don't, I, I don't know anything about that yet. We haven't, we have, we, I've just heard about it, and I was very happy about it. Um, I must say, I saw, I, I was at the Lilith Festival, uh, just, you know, just as a, I just watched some of the singers, uh, uh-huh. artists in last year outside LA, so uh-huh. um, I would love to, because I think it's a great festival. Right. What do you want Mer- Americans to know about Sissel? What? What do you want Americans to know about you? What, yeah, I want them to know about me? I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> No, um, that I'm a singer, <laughs> singer from Norway. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Now that you're living in Copenhagen, do you miss Norway and Bergen? Oh yes, 
Oh yes, I miss Norway all the time. Will you ever go back and live in Norway again? Oh well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, well, I'm going back and back quite often. Right. Yeah. So I mean, for me to live in to live in Copenhagen, it's you know it's one hour flight. It's nearly nothing. Right. And uh, but I but I miss, I miss living in Bergen. I miss I miss the nature and I miss my friends, of course. So uh-huh. the nature is so strong in Norway, and uh, so I miss that. How has having a two-year-old daughter changed your career and your life? Well, it makes um, everything that is about yourself is um, it's not so important. Uh huh. It takes the focus away from yourself and what what the thing that you're doing. But it also but it also helps you that the time you have on your work and the the time you you know the time you have to you know it do your work is very concentrated so when you're working you're definitely working because for me it's like when I come back home I'm absolutely devoted to my to my family so then it's nearly no place for work uh-huh. no time for work and my mind is filled up with my family so so it really keeps uh, for me it's, it's, I think it's very healthy <laughs> yeah I'm sure it is what kind of things do you do just for fun when you're relaxing? How do you like to relax? I, I, what I do, I, um, just for fun. What I don't know. Boring, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I do just no ordinary house things. I mean, I, I love I love to be home. Uh-huh. I, I'd be together with my daughter, and we go for a walk, and, and we play and we, you know, and, and then I do some very, you know, it's ordinary things that you do in a house. Right. In the house, washing. <laughs> I mean, I, it's so, I think it's so nice to just be home uh-huh. with my family and my kids. So, you know, you go to the, you do, you go out and see a movie or you visit friends and it's very dinners and all that. Very ordinary life. Uh-huh. So is that hard for you now to be here in America away from home and your family? No, it's not because it's it's um, as I said earlier. For me, it, I it, I always had this very. It's, I live two lives. I have one life when I work and one life when I'm when I'm private. Right. And so this is just. Um, I've always I've been living like this for four, twelve years, twelve fourteen years. So for me, it's like, you know, this is the way it is, and and I, I'm enjoying it very much. Are you going to be uh, at the Oscar ceremonies in Los Angeles? I don't know. You haven't heard that, huh? Mm-hmm. There's, you know, as you probably know, there's rumors going around that you might be there or that you might perform. So I just kind of wondered if you'd heard anything. Oh, I haven't. Well, I'm not invited, <laughs> as I know, <laughs> as far as I know. I don't know anything about that. Uh huh. I thought you might be able to be there since you're on a, the soundtrack, and I, the soundtrack, I believe, has been nominated, hasn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yes, and I think you will get it as well. Uh huh. I think you will. It's, it's such. A, I think it's so beautiful, and and um, I, well, I that's my just my opinion. I'm hoping that he will win. I hope so I'm really too. Hoping, I'm, you know, you, to be a part of to be part of that of beautiful music. I mean, it's uh, to be part of the film. It's uh, you know, if you really, you really, uh, it's like you're on a football game and it's your team playing. Uh huh. You know, you have the same, or I have the same feeling. Right. Rooting so, for your uh, team. To me, it's, it's so important that, you know, I just <laughs> cheer. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your early years in the Bergen Church Choir. Now, I... Well, yeah, the Bergen Church Choir. Well, I've never been in a church choir. Oh, I thought uh, somebody told me that you'd been in a church choir when you were young. No, oh, not really. Well, that was that was when well, I was three to five years old. Oh wow, that was really young. Oh, very early. Well, well, but I sang in a lot of choirs. I did. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've been singing in very quite a lot of choirs, children's choirs, and you know that we sang everything kinds of music, all kinds of music, and I sang in a in a choir that was on the television. And that's how it all started. In right. Way. Sing medals. Pardon? Sing medals. I've seen that program. Yes, sing medals. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I started there when I was 14, so that I was sort of... So that's how you were sort of discovered, is just getting on that show? Yeah. So then I tried, started singing around at hospitals and 
you know, all kinds of um, uh, Lions clubs and, you know, <laughs> prisons and everywhere. Wow. The Louis Halls. And, and that was a very nice time. I mean, to travel around just with a piano player and, and uh, it was a wonderful time. You, uh, when you were younger, I don't know if this is so much now, but you had like sort of a good girl image. Is that still part of you, you know? Part of me. If it still, if it still hangs around, is that what you mean? Yes. Well, yeah, I guess it does. Because, you know, it's, uh, um, I don't know, I guess it does. Well, I guess if you're, if you're smiling and you're singing my songs, I guess that's uh, how the image you get. <laughs> uh -huh. And is that image, like, really you? Well, I definitely hope I'm a nice girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I don't, oh, well, um, sometimes, particularly when I was younger, they don't do it that much now, I think. Uh-huh. No, they have a very average, I know they have a very, very good description, I think, most of the time. I mean, um, but that time, you know, you, I was very young and had long, blonde hair and singing all those very song, very beautiful songs, and my voice, and everything, you know, I was, you know, they believed that I was, some people, they pictured me as I was an angel, uh -huh. and that was not right, definitely not right, and all my friends, they said that, I did, I recognize you, is that the same girl that I know, so sometimes I felt like that, I did, uh -huh. but it was very, it didn't help that, that people were already put, setting me up, and putting me up on a pedestal, you know, right, but that has changed, so. You uh, have sung a lot with the Oslo Gospel Choir, and I've read of things where you've talked about the importance of Christ and Christianity in your life. Are you, like most Scandinavians, just like you believe in Christ, but not active in church, or do you actively go to a church? Or Well, I did. I went very active to church, but when I got Ingrid, and I, I tried to take her with me to church, but they don't have any, in the church I go to, they don't have anything for kids. Right. But it was very hard for me to go to church uh, with Ingrid. She was uh, like kind of running around and, you know, wanting, mommy, 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 you know. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it was not actually a good time. So, but, um, but it was, for me, for me, my religion is something very personal. Right. It's a personal stand that I've done, and, and I don't want to... I, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the artist kind of artist who is preaching. I don't uh -huh. like to preach about my religion. I think that my song, through my song, that's, I mean, it, the religion is so much a part of me. My religion is so much a part of me. So, so it influences the songs I do, the the music that I'm singing. So I think that uh, that, that it speaks for itself. I noticed from your album around Sodia Moria or The Gift of Love and then Inishti Shalem, your voice had really, I think, improved, sort of, I can't really describe it, but it was much better on Inishti Shalem. Is that because you put a lot of time in practice and lessons, or is it just because your voice matured? Well, it is, it is practice. Uh-huh. And also mature, but it doesn't, the, the voice matures only if you let it mature. Uh-huh. And uh, if you if you try, you know, if you try to follow up on everything, I mean, um, so I mean, the, the voice is changing all the time uh -huh. because it, it's part of your body. It's part, you know, it's inside your body. So, so when you mature, the voice also changes. I mean, everything. If you are, if you have a tension in your body, you could hear it on your voice. Or if, if you, if you, when you're crying, you can't sing. Because when you're crying, you use the muscles around your voice, and if you have a very big grief, people, you know, you have, sometimes singing could help you to get over the grief because you loosen up your muscles. It's very, you know, you know we're getting into the very physical things, but <laughs> that's true, so. In the last couple of years, you've done a lot of side projects, shall we say, like the Prince Igor and the Chieftain stuff and the song with Glee Scopoli. How come you haven't been working more on your own album? How come that... 
you haven't been working on your own album instead of like doing just individual songs with all these different groups and performers? Well, I was waiting for Rick Shirtoff to finish his project. Uh-huh. I kind of thought that might be it, but I wasn't sure. That's why. I've heard that you're a big fan of Barbara Streisand, is that correct? Yeah, well, I, I was she I, I, I was Kate Bush and Barbara Streisand that I was sort of starting. That was, I was, but I think Barbara Streisand is a wonderful artist and she's a wonderful singer. Uh-huh. But right now, I'm, I'm, I'm more into, I'm, I'm a fan of everybody who can sing. <laughs> well, that's great. I think that, personally, I think you've got such a great voice that you could be bigger than Barbara Streisand <laughs> if you're marketed right. So. Oh, well. Have you ever considered acting in films? Because you've done almost a little acting in a way, like doing the voice of Ariel for The Little Mermaid in Norwegian and Swedish and Danish. Well, I, I've, I've only done some acting on stage. Uh-huh. Uh, but but um, I don't know. I think it's, it's a very different world for what I'm doing. And uh, for me right now, it's, it's uh, of course, when you were a kid, you were always dreaming about that. Uh-huh. I was dreaming about, you know, we're acting on, on a film and being part of a movie and everything, but but uh, but right now I just feel like I want to focus on what I'm doing and that is singing. Right. I want to focus on my new album. So right now I d- I'm not thinking about that because it's a very different world. Yeah. And I don't know if I if I can. But uh-huh. If one day if it you know if it suddenly pops up something that is very interesting and this is something that I really want to do and. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you've had several opportunities where you've been on major television broadcasts, like Grand Prix when you were 16, I guess, and the Olympics, other things like that. What's it like to have a billion people watching you on TV? You don't think about it. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you get, like, feedback? Do you hear from, like, people all over the world? It would seem like you would almost have at least press people interested in you from all over the world. Yeah, but but, um, but when you're singing on stage or you're singing in the middle of the stadium, like on, at the opening ceremony uh, or the closing ceremony in '94, it's you know you see the people in front of you and or you could feel people that around you. Then that, that's that it's you know they are the people that you're singing to. Right. Have you ever been to Salt Lake City? Salt Lake City. Yes. No, I haven't. Well, that's my hometown here, okay. so someday you should come and visit us. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> are you familiar with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Pardon, what did you say now? I said, are you familiar with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Yes, I heard about them. I have. Would you ever be interested in being a featured vocalist with the choir? A lot of wow, great. <laughs> this is an invitation. <laughs> a lot of great performers, as you may know, may have heard a lot. Just about anybody who's anybody has sung with the choir before, and I know some people that could hook you up <laughs> to get you to be a <laughs> vocalist with the choir. <laughs> oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> Every Sunday they have a television and radio broadcast from the Tabernacle in Salt Lake City, mm-hmm. and. I think it would be fun if you could come. It's been a dream of mine to see you perform live. Oh, so. well, you know, well, we take one step at a time, eh? Right. <laughs> well, you know, well, you could, you always have, uh, you can always call Arnie. Uh-huh. Well, they can always call Arnie. That would be, I mean, I would love to. I mean, it sounds very wonderful. I love to sing with choir. I think I started myself in a choir, and, and, and I love, I love the sound of voices. Uh-huh. So for me, it's, I, and I still sing with choirs. I still do sing with also gospel choir. And, I mean, we I do all the co- other choirs, so I just love that. That would certainly be fun to hear you sing in person. <laughs> How, if we were to try and set something up, I know you're busy with your album and things like that, but how could we get a hold of Arna? <laughs> call him. In... Philadelphia, is he here, or in Norway, or where would we contact him? Oh, back in Norway. Not right now, uh-huh. but, but uh, he'll be home next, he won't be there next week. Okay, great. 